Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at something which I've been waiting for for a very, very long time. This is the Arctic Freezer A35 ARGB without clips. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today's video, we'll be taking a look at Arctic's Freezer A35 ARGB. And I've got to tell you how good it is to actually say those words at the end of the freezer. ARGB into a freezer type cooler. This is fantastic. This is the one that I've been waiting for. Now, hopefully everything goes to plan on this and it all works as intended. From what I've been told already, this was actually sent to us free of charge for review purposes from Arctic. So I should say that straight away. It is comparable in performance to the Freezer 34, which uh, most of you have probably seen already. But this obviously adds a little bit more in terms of addressable RGB, which the Freezer series was sadly lacking previously. So we're gonna go through, take a look at the packaging, take the cooler out, take a look at it, go through some of the features, pros, cons, etc. One thing I don't know at the moment is the price. At the time of filming, this is now the 29th of October, 2021. And currently this, as far as I can tell, is not actually released on retail shelves as we speak. So I don't know the exact price, and obviously that is gonna be a determining factor whether or not it is gonna be kind of making or breaking a product. I will update the video with the price if I get it in time before editing, or if not, look in the comment section and you'll find the price. Obviously there'll be links as well to Arctic sites so you can check out the local price in there. Also we'll put some affiliated links to Amazon should you wish to help support the channel. Okay, with all that said, let's uh, let's get into it. So taking a look at the packaging, this is uh, actually quite a nice packaging from Arctic. I like this, it's a slight improvement I think. Not too sure what you feel about it, but anyway, it goes through the basics there. So Arctic obviously has got a picture of the product. Uh, addressable RGB is a key feature of this, as you can probably tell. It does come with a limited six year warranty, which is always very nice to see. One thing that Arctic generally tends to do is uh, particularly good warranties. So yeah, no changes there, but still a welcome thing to see. Obviously it is the Freezer A35A-RGB, tower CPU cooler for AMD with addressable RGB. Now there is actually another version of this which is called the Freezer i35 for, you guessed it, Intel processors. So the A35 is for AMD, so this is AM4, AM3, etc, etc. The i series is going to be for LGA1200 and also LGA1700 with the adapter kits which uh, will be available as well. So whether you're on Intel or AMD, this particular model is gonna have you covered whichever way you decide to go. Now, the reason they've done that, they've split the SKU into two parts, primarily to avoid wasting materials and obviously to make fitting a lot easier. When you take a look at the fitting kit on this, I'll be honest with you, the fitting kit on this is absolutely fantastic. Possibly one of the best packaged coolers I've ever seen in my entire life. But anyway, we'll get into that later. On the bottom, so it supports things like Aura Sync, uh, Gigabytes, RGB 2.0, Mystic Light, etc., etc., Azrox Polychrome Sync, and it is for AMD processors. On the side of the box, goes through some of the specifications there. So, yep, Tower CPU cooler. I'll give you a close up so you can see it in more detail. Plastered all over the box are QR codes. So, if you want to find out any more details, you can just scan the screen or scan the box, obviously, if you've bought one already. You can find out more. The manual itself, the installation manual, isn't in the box, which I absolutely think is fantastic. It's a brilliant thing to do. Arctic do a really good thing of being kind of green. As much as I hate to say it, because that is used as a buzzword and a lot of these things, but they don't put stuff in here that you don't need. And if they can get away with not including it, they go to the ends of the earth to try and do that. So obviously there is a server somewhere generating all these mails, and that is probably left on 24 seven, but yeah, it's better than wasting a tree on an installation manual. So anyway, you can scan that for the instructions, etc. Although realistically, this is so easy, you're not gonna need it. On the bottom here, so we've got the specifications. I'll give you some close-ups of that now so you can have a quick read through. But essentially, it is very similar to that of the Freezer 34. So we've got four direct touch six mil heat pipes. We've got 54 aluminum fins with a thickness of 0.4 mil. Uh, comes with a tub of thermal compound, which is the MX5, which is always nice to see. I did a review of uh, our MX4 versus MX5, and actually the first time I used it, I didn't get on particularly well with it, but you can check that out up here if you wish to. We've also got things like the dimensions, the weight, etc. And actually one thing you notice straight away when you pick it up is actually it is quite lumpy. 734 grams, I believe it was from what I read on the back. So yeah, it's uh, it certainly is a substantial bit of kit but it does actually fit into a relatively smallish case. Looking at the actual dimensions there, as you can see, it actually comes in at under 160 mil, which is absolutely brilliant. A lot of cases, although they quote things like 160 or 165 mil clearance for tower CPU coolers, 
quite often depend on the motherboard and how it's situated those aren't always accurate and i do find even with my d15 in my case it says it supports 165 but it's not i'm basically squashing the glass on so yeah it's really nice to see that this is slightly more squat so that's enough about specifications let's take this thing out of the box and see what we actually get so first of all there is our what appears to be an accessories box which actually feels very lightweight which is always a good sign and next up is the actual cooler itself and that is pretty much it the rest is just cardboard which is uh, very easily recycled or just put back in the shelf somewhere to keep it for a later date so let's take a look at the accessories box first of all before we take a little bit of a deep dive on the cooler itself the accessories box is excellent it really is so yeah <laughs> That is it. I'll give you a close-up of the individual components, but essentially what you get here is basically everything you need and nothing that you don't. So there are two mounting arms, which are for the AM4 type brackets, AM3, etc, etc. I'll put a full list of the supported sockets on the bottom there. I think realistically AM3, AM4 is pretty much where most people are going to be looking. So two brackets. There's also the NX5, as we said, 0.86 grams, I believe. So they didn't give you a lot, but it's certainly enough for uh, possibly two or three applications. Next up are the uh, the mounting spacers. So this uses the standard AM4 and AM3 backplates, which is on your motherboard, which you come from the factory. So it's just a matter of removing the plastic, which is on your motherboard, and you can replace these. So you get four of these gray spacers, very similar to the way Noctua mounting systems are. And then you get four screws, obviously one screw per spacer, which then goes through yeah, you get the general idea so it just raises it off from the motherboard so extremely simple there's nothing that you don't need so if you get to the point where you've installed this and you've got bits left over you probably want to start again and have another go at it so now let's take a look at the cooler itself now as you can see this is an awesome looking cooler it does look particularly smart so it is predominantly finished in like an anodized black finish there so all black fins so very stealthy looking 54 fins i believe it was they said on there and they're all rounded over on the ends to make sure that the airflow actually passes through the cooler rather than kind of coming out through the side. Static pressure is what this is all about. The fan on the front is an addressable RGB one, so you've got 12 addressable RGBs actually inside the fan hub itself, and that goes through these kind of blades which are, I would call a kind of like a frosted look to them, so they're going to look really nice hopefully. We'll see what they look like a little bit later on camera. Also because these are the new style fans, they've actually upgraded like the P-series fans so these have got, you can probably make it out, it's like a, a sealed section. So each one of the blades is actually joined together. And what that does is it forces the air through a more targeted pattern. So as it's spinning, the air has no choice. It can't go anywhere other than down. It can't escape through the kind of the gap between the fans and actually the stride itself. So yeah, hopefully that works out particularly well. From what I've seen in reviews of these fans themselves, or the version of this fan which is actually available as a separate product this is kind of based on this very similar design it's not the exact same one and i'll show you why a little bit later but yeah it is designed around that kind of principle so this should be particularly good for airflow and static pressure it is mounted in a cowl which is excellent because it means we don't have any of those awful spring clips to uh navigate or negotiate with when you're trying to get it inside your pc which i always struggle with i really do there's one thing I said in the, I think it was the Freezer 34 and the 33 and possibly other models as well that had spring clips. I said all along, please, please don't use spring clips. Just use some kind of plastic mechanism where you can just clip it on. And finally, they've addressed that, which, I, yeah, it's just fantastic. So looking closer at the cowl, there's two cables coming out, one of which is going to be your PWM style connection. So go to your motherboard for speed of fan. And the other one is the addressable RGB. Now there's two outputs on there, so it's like a pass-through. So if you've got a motherboard which maybe doesn't have a, as many addressable RGB outputs as you'd like, then you can just use that as a pass-through to send the signal elsewhere. Nice long cable as well, so you can hide that down the back of your PC should you need to. The cowl itself, actually quite a nice looking plastic. Also got the Arctic logo on the top there. And the beauty of this is the fact that when you're actually installing it or doing any maintenance, you don't have to get crazy with the spring clips. Literally just leave the plastic off and that gives you easy access to the heatsink. And also it makes it easier for cleaning. So you can just take this out, you can leave the heatsink in the PC, which obviously doesn't disturb the paste, and then you can clean up the fan, etc., etc. As you can see, there is a foam backing on there as well. So where this actually presses 
against the cooler itself. It's dampened, so again, reducing vibrations, all that kind of stuff, and other noises that you would not normally want. The fan itself, one kind of downside which is inherent of all of the kind of A-series fans from Arctic is the fact that the fan is actually integral to the shroud. So if for some reason the fan was to fail, you wouldn't be able to temporarily use another cooler without kind of jerry-rigging something. Obviously it's got a six-year warranty, so if for some reason it does fail or develop some sort of fault, it will get replaced, but in the meantime it means you're kind of without a cooler potentially. I guess you could go back to your stock cooler temporarily, but yeah, would have been nice to have seen this have some way of actually replacing it should you need to. But I guess it does make it very simple because literally that is it. It's all there in one go, very easy to install as we'll find out a little bit later on. Looking at the actual heat sink itself, then as you can see it's all finished in that really nice black finish, which uh, I do like. And you can see on there you've got four heat pipes, as we said, six mil heat pipes, which are in a kind of U shape. So that's why you can see eight sections up here. So they loop through. Really, really nice to see this is those two screws. Again, very similar to kind of Noctua designs. So once you've got the mounts on there, just two screws to do up, which you've got nice and easy access from both sides. Very, very simple to do. And there's actually a channel cut out of that one there. So you can actually gain access to that a lot easier. Be interesting to see what the RAM clearance is like. The cooler itself is obviously slightly asymmetric because of the way it's designed. So this is clearly the rear, this is the front, and there is a little bit of offset. That should give us optimal RAM clearance, as we'll find out a little bit later on. The bottom is finished particularly nicely, so it's not quite a mirror finish, but uh, very close, and you'll probably see from some of the B-roll, actually just moving things in front of it, you can kind of make out there's something there. You can't see it clearly, but yeah, it's almost a mirror finish on the bottom there, so that's a very good sign, and it does feel exceptionally smooth to the touch, it really does. So that's very good, we like that a lot. Yeah, it's uh, I'm genuinely excited to try this out, which is what we should do next. So I think that's gonna pretty much wrap up everything uh, for this part. I suppose I really should touch on something else as well, which some of you are probably asking already, is obviously if you've seen things like the Freezer 34 eSports Duo, where you can have two fans on. Sadly, the way that this is designed, that doesn't appear to be an option. So it is literally a single fan, this is it. So I think this is why they kind of say this is kind of potentially almost like a cut down version of the Freezer 34, which is essentially at the time of uh, making this video is pretty much one of their flagship products, the eSport Duo. I'm hoping this is actually gonna be a little bit cheaper than the eSports version or even the standard Freezer 34. The A-series generally tend to be slightly more, how should I say, cost optimized. Again, I don't know at the moment, but I'll put the links in the video description so you can check it out for yourself. So I think that's pretty much it for taking a look at the cooler itself. Let's get it installed and uh, see how easy it is to install. Okay, so let's get on with actually installing this. So this is the Freezer A35-ARGB. So uh, yeah, I may cut this video so people can see this on its own. But anyway, if you're watching the full review, here we go. So this is how to install it onto an AM4 platform. And as you can see, this is our MSI motherboard. So this is a B550 uh, Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. Standard stock settings are in here. So we've got the, uh, the regular plastic edges on there. So we're gonna just remove those. So all we need is a cross-headed screwdriver and undo the screws top and bottom. So once you've got all the screws out, then you can remove the two plastic lugs. We will no longer be needing those. Okay, so now we've removed the plastic bits, now we can install the gray mounting lugs, first of all, or spacers, I guess you'd call them. Now these are slightly tapered towards one end. I don't think it makes much difference, but if you put them in, they are slightly fatter at the bottom than they are at the top, or at least they, uh, they certainly appear to be. So you put one on each one of the bits that come through from the AM4 backplate. Then the next thing to do is to get our mounting brackets. Now you notice on the mounting brackets, there is one section which is flat or has a kind of nut shape. So basically nuts go down and there is a raised section on these. And it's, so it's raised up, nuts down. That sounds terrible. So. All you want to do is just put it over the top. The hole that it uses, actually, if I haven't mentioned it already, which I probably have, is it uses the, the hole at the very end. So that is for AM4. If you're using AM3 or AM2, then it's going to be some of the smaller ones down the end there. But I think most of you will probably be using uh, AM4, so you want to use the one at the very end. So mount it in this kind of orientation. So you've got the, the mounting pillar just sticking slightly proud. Also, if you try and do it the other way around, you'll probably notice that because there is actually 
like a indent that kind of dips in so that doesn't actually fit particularly well over those plastic spacers so that is another thing which should be kind of telling you that they should be this way round. Although some of you will make the mistake I certainly have done in the past with these clips. I'm not afraid to admit it. So once you've got those, you've got the four long screws and literally you can just tighten those up and you get to a point where they won't tighten anymore. If you're doing this on a, a vertical surface and your motherboard's in a case and you can't lie it down for some reason, you can, if you get one of these started, you can actually, if you've got it like this, you can basically put one of the plastic washers over the top, hold it in place and then while you're doing that, you can actually swing that over and then that will hold it in place for getting screws in, which can be uh, quite a handy, handy tip. I've done it on this particular instance to do it on the flat, just to make life a little bit easier. So once you've got both screws in, you can give them both a final little turn, just to make sure they're nice and firmly attached. And then we can repeat the same process on the other side. And you should find once you've done this, you've got uh, no bits left over. Oh, that one's a little bit wobbly there so get it pretty much all the way tight and you can just swing that over the top and get your screw in and tighten up so when it's done just give it a final little cinch down maybe a quarter of a turn or so maybe a little bit more if you need it so then you have your protrusions up and you're ready to install the cooler although some thermal paste first would be nice so let's get the cooler ready and then we'll apply some paste. So the next part is to actually get this bit ready. So all we need to do on the side, this plastic area here and this plastic area here are what actually holds it in place. So what you want to do is either get a nail or your screwdriver or something and just lever that open. There we go. So once that's taken off, just put the shroud down and this will leave you with the cooler. Now make sure you put it around the right way. This is the front, which is essentially pretty much flat, and the back is like this. So your airflow should be going through from front to rear. So airflow in and out. So depending on how you've got your case set up, if you've got your fans at the front here, blowing air in the system, then you have it facing this way. If you've got just a fan on the back here, then you might want to turn this round the other way but this is the side that should be receiving fresh, cool air. Next thing to do is uh, remove the plastic film. Make sure you do this. So just peel the plastic film off to reveal the heat pipes. Rookie error, sometimes leaving it on. I've done it myself, but yeah, it is a pain. It won't actually damage it if you install it with the plastic, but it will reduce the ability to cool and you will see some slightly unusual temperatures. So uh, yeah, make sure you take off the film. So we're gonna apply some uh, MX-5. They do supply it in the kit, but I've got some anyway, which is open, so save opening a new one. And actually, I am gonna be redoing this later anyway, because this is just a kind of test fit for the camera before I put it in my own system to do some testing later on. I thought this would be an easy way of doing it. So they do suggest using a plastic spreader and actually spread the paste out. Again, for this particular instance, I'm not gonna bother because uh, we just, yeah, wanna get on and get it mounted. So when you're installing the cooler, there is a flat side, which is this side, and there's also a side which has got the kind of angles. So the angles go towards the rear of the case, or the exhaust, and the front, the flat section, is for the air intake. So depending on your setup, you may want to put it around one way or the other. Okay, so I'll show you that in a little bit more detail with the motherboard. So the flat side at the front here, towards the RAM, which is going to be the, the normal way of doing it, and the angled side at the back towards the exhaust. So what we want to do is just to kind of line up the screws with the actual protrusions. You can do one at the back if you want to, first of all, that might make things a little bit easier for some of you. So just to line that up, give you an idea of where it is, save you having to reapply the paste. And you should find the screws pretty much line up exactly. So you can see there, that is lined up pretty much bang on. So all we need to do is to a couple of turns Slowly do a few turns, so we'll do three or four turns that side. And then on the other side, we can just spin that around a little bit. And we can go ahead and do the same thing. You might want to apply a little bit of pressure if your screwdriver is a little bit on the short side and you can't quite reach through. So then just do a few turns on each side and repeat the process. And you can actually screw this in, just keep on going until the screw actually stops. 
so it won't let you screw any further so that is it, it won't screw any further so if that is that part of it done all we need to do now is to attach the cowl to the front so i'm going to spin that around again so we've got our plastic cowl here as you can see so the cowl will be fitting over like this and again the little plastic lugs on the side fit into these bits here so all you want to do is just make sure that the cables are exposed to the sides I'm not going to get trapped or anything and just push it in position and then just clips into place and that is it that is clipped in so now we can go ahead and plug in the address bar rgb so the header on this board is a three pin at the top here so just push that one onto there and for the pwm connection for the fan and you can route this underneath if you wanted to it's actually not a particularly long cable so you might find in some instances you have to and plug that into your cpu fan header and actually you'll see now that there is absolutely hundreds of room of clearance for the ram there so where the ram is there even if you've got a particularly tall ram that isn't going to be a problem at all due to the offset of the cooler on the back here so yeah ram clearance is absolutely phenomenal do like that a lot so there we go that is how to install the cooler on m4 platform i'm now going to take this all back off and put it into my rig for testing okay so we're back and i've been doing some testing and it's a few days later i've got an empty box now there's a very good reason why i've got an empty box and that is because i've actually decided to keep this actually in my main pc it is exceptionally good and i'll go through some of the results we found testing purposes now we are using a ryzen 9 3900x this is in my video editing pc it is with a radeon rx 570 xt we've also got the system a pretty optimal configuration three fans up front blowing lots of fresh air in now originally my system did have the noctua d15 in which is which i've used to actually compare against which yes probably isn't a particularly fair fight but i think you'll find the results actually pretty startling and as with most of these kind of tower coolers these days there's not a great deal that separates them mostly it's going to be down to things like price noise lighting etc etc and i've got to say the freezer a35 actually does very well in all of those regards so i've actually printed out my results so i'm going to read them off so i actually get the results right and i'll put them on the screen for you so you can see them a little bit closer so what we've done first of all is we've actually tested in cinebench r23 the scores are with our ryzen 9 3900x Precision boost overclocking is on and all fans in the system at 100%. So this is basically the best possible situation for both coolers because we've got loads and loads of fresh air coming in from the fans in the case anyway. So there's not going to be any real issues with starvation. It's essentially going to be like on an open test bench but with some forced airflow. So starting off on the left hand side in blue we've got the Arctic Freezer A35 and in orange we've got the Noctua D15. First of all we've got the idle temp. So this is basically the system completely idling, not doing... So this is basically the system idling, not doing anything at all. And surprisingly, the freezer actually managed to get down to 35 degrees Celsius. Now this is an ambient room, 23 degrees C. Weirdly, the Noctua D15 was at 39 degrees. Now I'll put a lot of that down to the way that the cooler actually works, the static pressure, etc. The Noctua D15 having those slightly larger fans, they do spin a little bit slower and the fan actually does kind of overlap the cooling tower itself whereas with this it's entirely focused we've got those folded over edges so the airflow is completely focused and zoned in on that cooling stack which is why under the idle temperatures it's done fantastically well when things get a little bit different is when the system is under a pretty much a full load again this is a cinebench r23 full load and in that we can see the results so again in blue we've got the freezer 35 at 67 degrees and the noctua d15 Beat it by about three degrees down at 64 degrees C again, 23 degrees ambient. So if you want to take those off your deltas, you're more than welcome to. So actually a fantastic showing, only three degrees difference. Now obviously margin of error, etc. the hardware results were recorded in hardware monitor, but these were the, essentially the best results I can get and they were performed exactly the same way for all the tests. So any differences, deviations, etc., are purely down to the software itself, not the testing method. So that's a pretty unrealistic test. Nobody's going to run their fans at 100% all the time. So using my default profile on my system with the fans set to ramp up, it ran about 65 degrees to around about 100% and the rest just to be a gradual curve upwards. We've actually got some pretty interesting results yet again. As you can see again, in the left-hand side, in the blue, we've got the Arctic Freezer A35 at 41 degrees, which actually pegged exactly level with the Noctua D15, okay, 41 degrees, so... Yep, nothing to really split between them, obviously other than 
price and surprisingly noise profile. When it gets interesting is again under full load. So under the full load rendering the Cinebench R23 project, we got 72 degrees on the Arctic and we got 68 degrees C on the Notchua. So again, between that sort of four degrees mark, so three to four degrees, which is kind of what we're expecting to see, which is really similar to what we get with the Freezer 34 eSports Duo. So this is doing surprisingly well. Now the thing is as well, when it comes down to the pricing, which uh, we have had since we started making the video, because a few days later on, pricing wise, this actually sits itself pretty much slap bang in the middle of the retail prices for the eSports Duo and the standard Freezer 34. Now, obviously the standard Freezer 34 is a single fan version and doesn't have any of those niceties such as addressable RGB or a nice fin stack. It's basically just a plain Jane cooler. So to have this actually in the middle with that addressable RGB fan, and the performance it gets, which is essentially the same as the 34, and very much knocking on the doorstep of the Notchua D15, these results are absolutely brilliant. And also, when it comes down to noise, the noise profile is exceptionally good. Realistically, even at 100%, you don't really know it's actually on. You can definitely tell that there's some air moving, but there's no whistling, which was something which some people with the previous Freezer 33 and 34 models, because the fan actually kind of went over the top edge of the cooling stack, sometimes you would find there's a slight whistle, again, down to the way that the spring clips were mounted onto the side. Whereas with this, because you've got that completely fully assembled cowl, it just slips on, there's no margin of error whatsoever. It literally is fitted perfectly in place as Arctic intended it to. Now, when it came to the actual Cinebench results at the end, they do see some variances, even though at the kind of the idle temperatures or the, the, kind of the stock settings or the regular fan settings as I'd call them, there was a slight deviation in results. So we are getting a little bit more performance out of the Noctua against the Freezer A35, but it's not a huge difference and it's almost within margin of error. So overall, excellent results. And I've got to be honest with you, this is now pretty much my favorite cooler. It's extremely easy to install. It works very well. It's virtually silent. It looks absolutely fantastic. As again, you've probably seen from some of the B-roll we've been putting on the screen. The fan itself does a spectacular job and I can't explain it. As far as specifications go, if you look at the box and check out the specs for these two, you would think that the Freezer 34 should absolutely wipe the floor with this thing, but bizarrely it doesn't. And I think a lot of that is down to the way that Arctic have engineered the fan blades on the A35. That new system with that entirely enclosed fan structure, pushing air right where it needs to be around those cooling fans and also the heat pipes as well does an amazing job and again a very very low noise threshold which for a lot of people is going to be really beneficial i'm actually really excited arctic have actually sent me a whole bunch of these fans to go with this and other arctic products which they've got coming up in the market soon so i'm going to be really excited to get all that together and reduce all of the uh, the noise in my pc and yeah i'm definitely definitely looking forward to it it's been a long time coming to actually have something in the rgb region for cpu coolers which doesn't cost an absolute fortune Again, this is going to equate to roughly what I can work out to be about £35 in the UK. It's kind of about €40, Euros, €39.99 Euros is the kind of recommended retail price. Obviously, we're coming up to Black Friday, Christmas and sales, etc. So I wouldn't be at all surprised to see this actually on sale and bring that price down even further. At which point then it puts it slap bang in competition with one of my other favourite coolers, which is the Vitro V5. But this actually is considerably easy to install and in my opinion, looks a lot nicer. So to wrap things up, what is my recommendations? Well, my recommendation is if you can find it in your region and it's at these prices that they're suggesting or even lower, definitely snap it up. It is a fantastic cooler. Like I said, within three to four degrees of the Noctua D15, which is uh, insane if you think about it. There's virtually no waste whatsoever other than, well, a cardboard box. The way that they've actually gone and been very green on this and basically given you only what you need, the only downside to that is if you do intend to switch your platform from AM4 to maybe the new LGA 1700 for Intel, then yeah, you are gonna need a different cooler or a different fitting kit. Although Arctic have assured me that they are gonna be selling out the LGA 1700 fitting kits as well. So potentially that is gonna be an upgrade. But it's just a shame, I think, that we don't actually give out awards on this channel, which we definitely probably should start doing. And if we did, this would definitely get the gold award or the go and buy it award. And certainly, if you do want to go and buy it, then there will be links in the video description below. So overall, extremely pleased. I'm so glad this has finally come to the market, and hopefully you guys feel the same way too. 
Let me know what you think about this one in the comment section below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.